Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to BWG Game Club. I'm your host, Peter, with my friends, Johnny Bag of Donuts. What up, you doinks? And Devon, a.k.a. the Dark Skin Vincent. Woo, baby! Salutations, y'all. Salutations. <laughs> what is BWG Game Club? It is a podcast where we pick a game, we play it, section by section and then we get together and discuss each section so far we've done several games this is now season five brand new season five we've made it to season five we made it to five dude Woo! how crazy is that it's awesome we highly recommend that you check out our previous seasons all of those available in full for your binging pleasure now for season five we did something a little special we let our community vote on which game we would play. We had three choices for them to vote between, and the community chose Catherine. Blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> what is Catherine? It was a game that was launched on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 back in 2011. It was developed by Atlas, and it is a game about this man who has weird dreams for an entire week. He's also caught in the middle of a vicious love triangle. Mm. It's fucking weird. <laughs> it's not now, a bad triangle to be in. I Just do <laughs> want to say... I do oh, want it's to, bad. It's a bad triangle. <laughs> uh. Now, I do want to let John uh. and the community know something. John, you right. actually really like this. I think you'll find this really cool. <laughs> so in this game, there are animated cutscenes. And when I mean animated, it's... Legit anime. So the, many of the cutscenes are told through Japanimation. The studio that made that animation is the same studio that made those three Berserk films. Ah, uh, cool. That's pretty right? sick. Nice. <laughs> That's <is> pretty dope. <laughs> Hell yeah. If, if you fuck don't Griffiths. know. <laughs> Hashtag fuck Griffiths, dude. <laughs> True. <laughs> I'll get down to that hashtag. Uh, unfortunately, he does the fucking. Oh. <laughs> if you don't know what Berserk is, it's a popular manga that was adapted into an anime and then into three films. Great films. Go check it out. It's a lot of fun. But fun fact for John, Devon, and everyone listening or watching. Thank you. That was awesome. That's sick. That's dude. cool. For our first section, we had to play stages one and two. We had to get to stage three. Guys, I'm going to ask you two questions. All right. First question. When you found out you had to play Catherine, what was on your mind? Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> and a lot of it. No, I don't want to play this. <laughs> I, was, I was actually pretty excited because, one, I, find I get to beat another game. And, two, I always wanted to play Catherine, but I just never really, you know, I, I don't think I ever really got too interested in it so but now that we're playing it i'm like fucking throw me in He's like, now, so now that i'm forced to i'll <laughs> definitely play <laughs> i'm a fucking i'm a weeb bro so like i'm, I'm all in just I'm fucking all in. simp jesus yeah. Christ. wow okay <laughs> <laughs> all right well, who are you bro what we use the word clout now you use simp? Oh, done come out all right. All right. fucking boomers coming in here and using my shit dude Second question, could you let us know what you thought of this first section? I'm going to say st strange and frustrating as well. Oh, boy. Uh, if it's frustrating now, Devon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would just say it, it's frustrating to get used to controller. Because, like, on the D-pad, if you click a little bit, I don't know. It's very sensitive, I would say, on the controller. I have two feet squarely planted in the camp of highly enjoying it. Really? Yeah. I am we did it, guys. So shocked. <laughs> I am yeah. so shocked. Yeah, we did I, it. I, I, I'm, uh, I definitely, it was uh, a 180 from what I thought was going was gonna to happen. For 180. <laughs> Maybe. That's not to say there's some things there that that bug me, right. but like, right? I'm, I'm, dude, I'm, I'm so, I'm enjoying. I wanted to play more. Like, <laughs> but wow. the, uh, I yeah. think he would honestly. I think he would like Persona Five. 
to be completely honest. Ah, uh, let's, I... let's slow down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he would. I think he would. <laughs> oh, awesome. Wow. Was not expecting that. Yeah. <laughs> me, I, actually. I'm a big anime fan, so pretty much mm-hmm. anything in that realm I'm immediately interested in. I am really enjoying the story so far, and I love the idea of the gameplay. We're going to okay. dive further into that. I do want to let everyone know that this is technically our first time playing through the game. And I say technically because I have played like the first couple hours oh, really? once before, yeah. but I never made it past that because gotcha. okay. I wanted it to be a game club game. Gotcha. And okay. that's why cool. I never continued. I said, no, 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 I'm going to try to get this to be a game club game. <laughs> I have succeeded. And now I will be playing through it completely for was, the first time. That was my mistake too, because I brought that shit up, <laughs> like doing some analysis on uh, Twitch streams, and I was like, "Oh, Catherine seems to be gaining some speed." And then Pete's like, "Oh yeah, we should tell you. I'll make that my choice so, for the community." And then I got fucking beat out. So <laughs> <clears throat> I blame. I can only blame myself. <laughs> there was there was part there was part collusion in that too to get yeah to yeah it. yeah Devon didn't even vote for his own goddamn game can we just <laughs> take a minute and <laughs> fucking put that out there <laughs> you son of a bitch uh. well without further ado guys let's dive in to the story of Catherine and let's meet our protagonist Vincent Brooks. When the game starts off, you get a weird montage of different scenes from films. Once that ends, you see the logo Golden Playhouse on a TV. The screen pulls back, and we get to meet this sultry woman. (laughs) Her name is the Midnight Venus, Trisha. Fucking love this game already. (laughs) She is scantily clad, as any good anime character should be. (laughs) <laughs> and service to the man. That is a joke. Oh, <laughs> uh, but she also has this giant red afro. <laughs> it's, it's freaking huge. huge. It's nuts. She looks like she has red mutton chops too, but <laughs> yeah, pretty just much. the hair going into her, into her face. <laughs> she talks about dreams, and dreams where if you fall and you hit the ground, you die. They say if you fall in a dream and don't wake up before you land, you die in real life. Tonight's story is Catherine, an unconventional romantic horror. A man with a certain (laughs) curse has a terrifying week. Our hero in this story is Vincent Brooks, age 32. He's an earnest and kind man. But one day, we begin to see him have terrifying nightmares. On top of that, a torrent of sweet seduction swoops down upon him. Mmm, what a playboy, huh? Will he be able to overcome all the blocks in his life? His outcome, hmm, depends on you, viewers. Sorry to keep you waiting. Raise the curtains. Now enjoy the show until we meet again. Just want to gauge your thoughts off of that brief intro scene. What were you guys thinking? I had no idea what was going on. So much stuff was happening in it. And I was just like trying to piece it all together, but couldn't really piece it all together. So I was like, "Eh, I mean, I'll figure it out when we play. I thought it was a cool presentation. I, I got kind of a feeling of uh, like a Twilight Zone, like it's mm. like an episode out of a out of a you know a series, and it's like this is Catherine. You know, it was, uh, I thought it was I thought that was neat. I liked it. I definitely liked the unique presentation of it, and it's a cool way of diving right into the story, making you seem like, oh, this is a story that we're telling you, but at the same time, you're about to feel for these characters that right. you're going to be introduced right. to. We move over to Vincent. Sitting across his girlfriend, Catherine, with a K. They're sitting in a cafe. She tells him that he's been acting weird lately, kind of spacing out. Hey, where'd you go? Snap out of it. (laughs) Were you even listening? Uh, sure. You know, you've been a little out of it lately. Is everything all right? You've been spacing out left and right. 
Oh, sorry. I uh, had to work early this morning. <laughs> Cue the intro. And I actually really enjoyed the intro. Oh, some Man. dope ass beats, bro. Yeah. John was jamming in case you guys didn't. <laughs> I also just like that the uh the use the character names as like the people that are starring in it. Mm -hmm. like it was, in the credits. So, yeah. So, Definitely cool. It's almost kind of like you're playing a like a rom com. There you go. It's more of a horror story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least to me it was. I don't know. <laughs> my okay, Rob, Rob Horror Com. There you go. After that intro, we get our first taste of gameplay and what we will be doing for the majority of the game. Vincent opens a door, and when you see him, he has two sheep horns <laughs> coming out of his head. He walks out onto this platform, onto this block, with a pillow, and he's in his boxers. Very yeah. nice boxers, too. I have the same pair. He obviously has no idea what's going on, but he's locked in there. He looks around, not sure what's going on, and suddenly, a loud noise happens below him. When he looks down, when he looks over the edge of the block he's standing on, the platforms below, the blocks below him begin to fall. Terrifying for him. He doesn't know what to do until a voice tells him to... Climb. 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 Hurry up and climb. Who are you? Where is this place? Save your breath and start climbing. If you fall, you're dead. I'll die. Are you fucking serious? The bottom of the stage is falling. Use the directional pad to move and climb. The game is a puzzle game. You basically have to align the blocks so you can climb up to the goal. You can pull them out, you can push them out, hang them off of the side, as long as the edges connect. You can do a lot, but the goal is to get to the top, to get you to the goal. Create a path. Guys, this was our first taste of what we'll be doing throughout many of the levels. What did you think of it? I mean, I thought it was fine. Like I said, when you're playing with the gamepad, the controller, whatever you're using, not keyboard or mouse, it's very sensitive. I'm using the D-pad because the thumbsticks, it was kind of weird at first. So I just went straight to the D-pad. Even that is a little bit weird. When you press it, it kind of goes like twice. And I don't know if that's just my controller or whatever, but... It's your Call of Duty fingers. That's what it is. Yeah, that's probably what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Twitch shooter, you know. But no, I mean, it's... I like this kind of puzzle. Like, this is, this is fun. And I just know that it's going to get harder. And I know I'm going to get frustrated. I already know it. I started out with the uh, the thumbstick and realized that it is very directional. So like it was hard to use the thumbstick to be precise in where I wanted to go. So I moved over to the D-pad. Once I did that, it was a lot less frustration. I will say like puzzle wise, not super into it. Like it's not bad, but it's also I, I, I can tell like when it gets super hard that it's going to be pretty frustrating because i felt like there's a little bit of difficulty even on the the lower level uh stuff that later on in the section i was like fuck i, I know it's gonna be a little little crazy but i think overall it was still i still enjoyed it i still like trying to figure out how to best um create a path i liked it i'm definitely a fan of it but like you guys said it requires very specific movements Mm -hmm. So one mistake, like pressing the D-pad down for too long or pressing right instead of left, that can cost you a lot of time. It's not too difficult now, mm -hmm. but I know that as we get farther along, especially because I got to play some of the puzzles mm -hmm. coming up, this game is going to be fun, but also <laughs> kind of frustrating. I think it's going to be mean, rewarding in a way, though. Like When you yeah. finally figure it out, when you finally get it, it'll, you'll think, yes, did it. Ah! <laughs> I will say, like, they give you continues that you can find. Like, if you find a pillow, it's an extra continue that you can use to go on there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's checkpoints. There's, like, yeah. if, you, if you move a box in a certain direction, you could hit the back button 
and it oh, undoes it and goes back. So it's like there's some mechanics in there to you. Yeah, <laughs> I did. There's definitely mechanics in there to help you and it's to make it a little bit less frustrating. And there's like uh, objects you can pick up to to almost like special objects to do things like well, there's an extra block that you can use and right. stuff like that. So definitely things that will help you out. I just again with it being time sensitive too because the the ground's collapsing upwards there's definitely points where i was like what the fuck am i supposed to do and i'm like looking at it and i'm like oh shit like i'm gonna die because the the ground is is running out and i don't know we'll see you know i think it's more about mastering the techniques of uh, how to build the pathways and then uh, once you get kind of get that down and once you get more than just getting your feet wet you know, you can actually see the puzzles and then be like, all right, I know what I have to do to get up there. Yeah, I don't recommend ever climbing blindly or just moving blocks. Yeah. It's definitely not a game where you can do that. Mm-hmm. You need to pay attention to what you're moving and move them in a proper format in order to get up there. Right. So without doing that, you're going to get stuck. You're going to trap yourself and you're going to keep on restarting. So guys... Learn those techniques. <laughs> uh, describe the environment, guys. Um, very You're eerie. Hell. <laughs> uh, <pretty much. laughs> very eerie. I'm trying to think of like sound wise. Echoey. Oh, God, okay. don't even get me fucking started. Like, uh, th- this is one my one big complaint of of this game, and it's when you get towards the top of the mm. so so you're in this this rock structure, like surrounding, and you're you're moving up with these these like stone blocks. And there's like there's metal and stone. The stone ones, some you can't move, some you can, but they move slower. But yeah, you you like make it up to the section. When you get to the top portion of the section, you start hearing this church bell ringing. And I get, I completely understand why they're doing it. But the the fact of the matter is, is it starts fairly early, like at the top. And like I feel like that's all you're hearing for a, a solid portion of the time is just gong 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 and it's like it's kind of annoying to have to listen to you like over and over and over and over again and that was pissing me off a lot all right, all right, i got it all right where is this what is this ringing as you near the top you will hear a bell ring the exit is near hurry you know what? it honestly wouldn't even be as bad if it was just limited to this this section of like when you're when you're actually going to the puzzles but not to fast forward but you can you hit these landing areas after you reach the top where you can talk to people and and do certain things and the fucking ringing is still going on at right. that part and it's like like i i'm trying to talk to people it's like why are you continuing to 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 do it and that that just set me over the edge a little bit with the the fucking ringing <laughs> we make it to the top but we're not quite done with this area yet gameplay wise we are but vincent has a little something extra to see these two giant deformed hands start coming up one of them has a giant fork (laughs) and they reach up toward vincent and vincent says nah and goes through the door (laughs) (laughs) what did you guys think of that once again creepy foreshadowing Definitely creepy. Um, didn't really know what it was, but figured it was gonna play a big part in yeah. the game, anyways. It's like foreshadowing. This is gonna this is gonna be something we're gonna need to face in the future. I'm not gonna say that you guys are wrong, because you're not. Because <laughs> <laughs> you are not. Once Vincent gets through the door, he's safe. He wakes up. He wakes up from the dream. That was just a dream. That is a dream where if he dies, he dies in real life. Ooh, it was all a dream. He used to read Word Up magazine. <laughs> Did you guys die during that Hell no. first puzzle? I think I died the first time I moved off a block. For some reason, like I, I was like figuring out the controls, and I think that was when I was doing the thumbstick. The way I thought it was working is like the direction you're pointing is the way that you're going to be like trying to get on top of a block. And I was I, on the opposite side. Like I crawled around the back end of it and was trying to hit mm. forward. And I ended up hitting down and I just let go of the ledge <laughs> and fell. 
I was like, okay. <laughs> All right. It was like, fuck me. That was an experimental death. Yes. That's exactly. what it was. That's what it was. But it was, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, I understand. Yeah. It wasn't it like the puzzle got overcame. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. It doesn't count. I don't count. That's all right. I don't, I don't count. <laughs> we let, you're still at zero. You're still at yeah. zero. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not at zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will also agree with that, too. Uh, me either. <laughs> As Vincent wakes up, he pissed the bed. <laughs> Definitely embarrassing. Yeah, that shit was weird, bro. He like took his hand and went straight into his pants and was like, <laughs> and I was like, bro, what is he doing right now? <laughs> and when he felt the bed, I was like, oh, okay. He's like, is it gone? Oh, it's still there. <laughs> right. That's me every morning. <laughs> is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? <laughs> Vincent gets a call, and we can assume that that's Catherine. She's asking to meet him. And then we go back to the scene that we saw at the beginning. Hey, how many years have we been together? Huh? Oh, man. How long has it been? It's been so long, I can't remember. Hmm. How many years? I'm asking you. It's just my mother's been calling me up and asking how we're doing. Oh. She's worried about me. She knows I've got a career that keeps me busy, but... Yeah. I mean, it's easy to keep things like they are now, but... I don't know. Sometimes easy's best, right? I mean, who knows what'll happen in the future? I suppose. That's uh, actually... what marriage will do to you right there. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that their relationship has kind of hit a snag. You know, it's... At that point where the woman or the man start questioning, what's next? Yeah, in this case, up the pop, you know, <laughs> exactly. In this case, it's Catherine hinting at the fact that she wants more from this relationship. Don't We've definitely all. seen this scene many times in other types of media, but this one definitely has a unique cringe to it. Oh, <laughs> and I think so... it's the way that Vincent acts throughout yes. the scene. <laughs> Hundred percent. What do you guys think? I I completely agree. I don't like cringe too much, and like the way he presents it and the way he kind of seems a little bit put off by like their whole conversation, and everything. I'm kind of like, I mean, I get it. I definitely get it. I completely understand. But at the same time, I'm like, this is kind of awkward. Like it just makes you feel awkward. And like if anyone was in that cafe listening, because I mean, I'm kind of nosy. So like, I mean people like butt into people's you know personal <laughs> space or things like that if someone was listening they'd be like man this dude's kind of a loser kind of you know like <laughs> i should um, make it clear that vincent doesn't want that step forward right. yeah he is he's not squarely like just happy status quo like keeping everything the way it is right not not dissatisfied with the relationship he just doesn't feel the need to have to change it up at all correct from that little bit what did you guys think of Catherine? so I'll just say from like you know a story perspective you could totally understand where she's coming from wanting to move things forward but being the dude and <laughs> you know everybody gets caught up in, in that kind of well you know she's going the more serious route of like marriage and stuff like that but even on a small scale everybody's been a part of that kind of conversation like what are we or like what's right. what do we do it's like as a dude i just feel for vincent so bad and i'm just like dude i can't stand Catherine already <laughs> she's just <laughs> she's annoying to me and it's like uh, i totally feel for vincent like immediately i was like dude we've all been there man <laughs> it's like we've all been there <laughs> I'm. Um, I can actually. I, I'll agree with that definitely because we all have been there, and they're already dating, so they already kind of have a label on it, and he doesn't want to take it to that next step. And I feel for Vincent too because when he was talking to her and everything, I was just like, kind of with him, dude. Like, yeah. dude just wants to chill and just hang out and vibe out, and she's just like, well, my mother was asking, and it's like, Ooh, oh, God. really? You had to throw oh, that God. out. Oh, you had to throw that in my face, huh? Really? Like John said, you kind of feel for him, and you're like, "Yeah, dude, I'm right there with you." I mean, he's kind of like an idiot a little bit. Oh, so he's like, very dumb. <laughs> yes, he is very dumb. <laughs> so like, he definitely 
isn't handling the situation as smoothly as you could but like again um and on his side of things like <laughs> i'm totally i was just like fuck like immediately just like yep me and vincent we're bros right now <laughs> <laughs> what did you I, think pete so i totally understand both sides it's that moment where one party wants something more where the other mm-hmm. party is thinking yeah but like we're like it's good like why wreck right. what's good why change what's good Right. Mm-hmm. So for me, I'm of the opinion where if both sides are like, yeah, let's go to this next step. Mm-hmm. Sure. But when it's one side that you can tell is constantly pushing that agenda on them, you start to think, oh, like, why are you being so pushy? <laughs> At the same time, you're like, I understand because how long you guys have been together. And it's like, where do you go? So right. it's really in terms of relationship, but I'm interested in seeing how it's going to turn out for them. Yeah. But yeah, nobody wants an overbearing significant other. No. Uh, 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 uh. (laughs) So when Catherine started talking to him like that, immediately got the vibe of no. Well, the first incarnation of her is just her tapping her finger impatiently. Like she's like, she's annoyed and bugging. You're like, fuck God. Like, it's just where'd stuff you, like this in media where I'm just like, oh, God, like, I have to think about times when I've had to deal with stuff like that. I'm like, fuck. It just immediately just makes me so mad. <laughs> Everything she said, I just read it in my girlfriend. <sighs> Those <laughs> looks, too, like, the expressions she has, just not taking any shit. It's so stereotypical, but it's also something that happens all the time yes. <laughs> with like with people 100%. on an everyday basis. There's a man out there right now that is getting asked that very question. Yep. And, and he's all he wants to do is, just as all, poorly as Vince. <laughs> and all he wants to do is go to sleep and he can't go to bed. Because if he does, she's gonna hit him and he's gonna wake up and <laughs> fuck do you want from me? <laughs> I'm fucking do all this shit. Why can't you just be happy with all you have now? Oh, feel him dude after we fade away from the cafe we get a face full of dead guy a man is dead in his bed he looks like the life force was just sucked from him he must have been married Drained to the bone (laughs) it's like emotep himself came in there (laughs) the body has been found by the police they're investigating it but it does not look like good things are happening in this city And in other news, we have more on the recent string of unexplained deaths that seem to be exclusively involving young men. Cause of death is unknown, and while police are investigating accidental causes, foul play has apparently not been ruled out. Hey, change it! The match is on! Coming! Guys, with the deaths, do you guys think that's connected to what's happening with our main man, Vincent? Yeah, I think they're sprinkling uh, some some stuff there, trying to... Just uh, lay the foundation. Sprinkle in some white lies. Sprinkle them in. <laughs> Just one, a couple of little white lies won't do nothing. <laughs> no, nah, definitely. It's definitely got something to do with it. Shortly after, we are now in a bar, and Vincent is with two of his friends, Johnny and Tobias. Catherine keeps telling me how her mother is constantly calling her. She says she's not worried about it, though. totally going to take it, right, Vinny? And what do you think? So, who are you betting on? Come on, pick one. Are you kidding? Women's wrestling? What I know. <laughs> Sounds to me like she finally wants you to tie the knot. The conversation here is more of the same, except Vincent is now getting to vent to his friends. Johnny knows that Catherine wants to marry Vincent, but Vincent is not on board with it. He thought that Catherine would always be focused on her job and wouldn't want to settle down like that. But she's getting to that point where she wants uh, a little something more. And he's getting advice from his friends in the process. What did you guys think of Johnny and Toby? Johnny's more kind of like level-headed. He sees both sides, but I, I would say he's like he's understanding, right? He understands where Catherine's coming from. He kind of gets where Vincent's coming from, I guess. And uh, Tobias, I don't know. He's kind of just like a kid. He's almost, he's definitely the younger one out of them. 
I would say he's kind of like the comedic person <laughs> in the group. Yeah, I'd say uh, Tobias is definitely the one that's like acts more like a kid. I don't know if he is younger than them or not, but he's kind of just like ah, ah just fucking do whatever. Right. And and Johnny's kind of like straight shooting with with Vincent, kind of giving him the hard facts of right. what's going on and the realization of uh, what he's going to be up against. I think he starts going into about his girlfriend and how he's saying that you know he told her he wasn't going to get married to her or anything like that. But yeah, he he seems more of like the straight lace, just like get down and dirty to the to the point of it. Kind of an asshole, but yeah. you know, it's the stuff oh, you need to hear sometimes. <laughs> Most Johnnies are. Hey, <laughs> we're smart guys, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna tell you what you need to hear, not not what you want to hear. Right, He's exactly. a realistic asshole, you know. Right. You need friends like that. Huh? Johnny then goes into their friend Paul. Anyway. Did you hear about Paul? He's dead. Paul? Wait, that Paul? He's dead? Yeah, I heard he just got divorced, but he looked healthy. It's a complete shock. What happened to him? An accident? I don't know. Apparently his mother just found him dead in his room this morning. This morning? Wait, you mean? Yeah, the mystery death on the news? That was him. Holy shit, no way! Maybe Will will wind up dead tomorrow too. Shut the hell up. Man, I hate the news. They're always trying to push their agenda for ratings. Toby, you are really easy to mess with. So Paul, their old friend, passed away. That was the man that we saw dead in the bed. But there was a little hint in there that we probably need to pay attention to is that he was recently divorced. Mm. Mm. But that's where they drop it. Johnny and Toby then have to leave. And that's when we get to the good stuff. Oh, man. The meat and potato. <laughs> Vincent decides to hang out on the bar. And the game teaches you some mechanics right now, such as being able to check your phone, save, reply to text messages that you receive. That's my favorite part. <laughs> I love <laughs> replying to the text messages. I think that's so much fun. Like, so. it is great, dude. It, uh, that's what I really like about this game. Is like it, it gives you a couple options of of like what to what to text, and you can basically line by line, you know, put what you want to respond in the text message. But there's like three options per line, so you can essentially create your own oh, text message. I didn't know and that. oh yeah, dude. Oh, oh. yeah, dude. So oh, yeah. you can basically put a line of text. If you don't like what it says, you can press cancel. It'll disappear. You enter in another line of text and the line will be different. So you can choose yeah. what you want to say. Yeah. Good. So it's like you can you can essentially be like an asshole if you want. You can kind of be like nice or you can kind of do like a walk a middle ground. And, and you can like vary in between the lines, you know, as far as what you want. Like one line can be kind of asshole-ish and then kind of forgiving the next line. Like it's it's cool like i i totally thought that was a, a really cool like uh mechanic and gameplay especially if like if they're gonna tailor the experience to how you play this game like that i think that was really cool john i want to ask you mm -hmm. which way did you lean toward i i played middle ground to nice on on here didn't didn't really do anything too crazy devon i'm guessing <laughs> whatever responses <laughs> first, first came up were you an asshole yeah bro it went because it, like at the end of this when you answer there's a little you get a little meter kind of like your honor system in red dead yes right so my shit went and it didn't really sound too bad about what he said because <laughs> like i think my first one was does it bother you and then the second line i worry about it too sometimes and i think the last one i don't know what it said to be honest with you, but my shit went from like being middle to go like, and I was like, <gasps> the to the left, doesn't the really left make sense. to the red yeah, to the side, left. right? Yes, yeah. to the red yeah. side, because one Cause side's red, blue, to the blue yeah. and then left is red. So the, I mean, the meter I, doesn't I, necessarily make sense to me though, because there's times where like I feel like I answered just fine and like mm -hmm. nice and not in like an asshole way, and it went it went to like the red side. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, uh, all right. <laughs> My supreme white hat brought oh, me up every is. single yeah. time. <laughs> the fucking white knight himself. 
I'm a good guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna lie, Pete. I'm not gonna lie. Like, especially when he's at the bar with with his friends. Like, I'm just picturing who these characters are like my actual friends in real life. <laughs> and I was like, the way that Vincent was responding sometimes, I was like, that's Pete. <laughs> that's, like, that's, that's, like, that's definitely Pete. <laughs> he's, he's a nice guy. <laughs> he's just... But yes, I am glad that you brought up the meter because this is where we get introduced to it. When certain words and actions change Vincent's inner ideas, a meter will be shown. Vincent's words and actions will affect the story. Remember it. So the answers that you give to people, the text messages, the way you respond to them, and another factor will play a role in how that meter either moves to the right or moves to the left. I have a feeling it's going to be very interesting seeing how our endings differ. Well, now that I know how to change answers, we'll be... <laughs> you got time to make it up. Uh -huh. <laughs> After that introduction, we get introduced, slightly introduced, I should say, because we don't get to see this person yet. But a blonde woman comes into the bar and she sits down right across from Vincent. We don't get to see too much of her. What we see is that she's wearing white, she's wearing high stockings, a uh, short dress. So basically, you can see her legs. <laughs> Devon's about to whip out the Jergens. <laughs> <laughs> no face reveal, though. But we can definitely tell that she has blonde hair. They show another angle where she's sitting down at the booth. And we can see that she has blonde hair done up in a weird way. Almost like two horns. <laughs> ah, pigtail <laughs> horns. Yeah. Mm. Anyone notice the name of the bar? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the Stray <laughs> Sheep. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to stage two. Right. We're back to the gameplay, boys. We're back <laughs> to climbing. Stage two, we have a little introduction to it. We're not just starting off walking through the door. Vincent wakes up in what looks like this purple room, and there's a door that him and a bunch of sheep, a bunch <laughs> of stray sheep, are walking toward. Almost like lambs to the slaughter. <laughs> Bring them in. Ah, it's you. <laughs> what are you waiting for? I'd just like to bring up is like the whole presentation of this game is really awesome. Like yeah. the the voice acting is great. You know, yeah. the the art when it's the actual anime art is awesome. But even just the in-game engine, I think yeah. everyone's uh, you know rendered pretty closely to what the actual anime looks like. So. It it does feel like you're inside, you know, an episode of a cartoon or something like that. Like I, it was just, it was very enjoyable to to sit and when you're watching stuff versus not even playing it. Like it was, it's a lot of fun. I think a big part of that is you can tell the foundation of the story is really strong. I mean, it's it's definitely like so far a twist on like a very simple story, right? It's something that people can relate to, even if you're. Even if you're a girl in a relationship with a, with a guy or you know anyone else, and you are in the same place as Vincent, like it doesn't have to be the guy always feeling the pressure, right? It's like every, other people feel pressure for different things. It's like you could still relate to it, even though you might not be in per se the same situation. But it's it's uh, it's a good time. It's a good time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached prison of despair, first floor. <laughs> yep. Which means that there's going to be going more up. than one. <laughs> Vincent walks in here, and he has no idea what is happening. The area looks different from the one that he was in before. The underground cemetery is what it was called. Mm -hmm. This area looks definitely more like a prison, obviously. <laughs> but you can look around, and you can see that there are cages with sheep trapped in them. As we know at this point, it's time for Vincent to climb. But there are different features that they introduce in this first floor puzzle, such as cracked blocks, where if you stand on them too long, you'll fall through. Mm -hmm. They introduce that you can hang from blocks, and they teach you about checkpoints, which we've mm -hmm. brought up before. Again, this puzzle, not necessarily difficult. You can make it up here 
pretty right. easily. I don't know if you guys had any struggle with this first floor. No struggles. The one thing I noticed too, and it kind of brought me back to like Sega SNES type games where you can get into that loop of like, you know, where you'd find an extra life, but then you die, but then you'd go back to the beginning. You could get the extra life. And it's kind of like, just like a free, like a freebie right. that you can do like the little loop. Um, like the same thing with, with the, uh, the extra checkpoints or not checkpoints, the, uh, the extra continues. But I noticed that like, I found myself in later levels when I reached the checkpoint and then I would go up and I would die and I would be using like a continue that gives you the option to go back to the checkpoint or for, start from the beginning. And I'm like, should I start from the beginning? Cause I know I could get that extra continue that I, and it was easy to get there. Like I could just like <laughs> go back up and I, I was like debating whether to, to just go right from like the halfway checkpoint spot or just start all over again. But I did the checkpoint. It does have that old school feel, John with yeah. the games. I've definitely done that before. I definitely love that memory of, you die and you're like no, but when you go back yeah. to the checkpoint, you're like oh, it's still there, so I can yeah. Grab and I haven't, I have dude, I haven't had that feeling in a while. It was cool. I was just like oh man, it like brought me back. It was, it was awesome. First floor done, guys. Woo. Pretty easy. Gong, gong, gong. John's <laughs> favorite sound starts so going off. Uh. But we have made it to what is called a landing. John mentioned these briefly earlier. These landings are little breaks in between the floors that you have to climb. So we climb that first floor. We reach this landing. We'll have to climb another floor. Maybe there's another landing. You'll find out in just a bit. At these landings, there's several things happening. You have a bunch of sheep hanging around. <laughs> Tons of sheep. They I all love these guys. <laughs> they're all different sheep. They're all have different quirks or maybe one's wearing a tie maybe one has a weird hairdo maybe one's wearing glasses so you can assume that all these sheep are people you do find out during the conversation with some of them that they look at you and they see a sheep (laughs) and they say something like what are you talking about you're the sheep i'm not the sheep so (laughs) the way this dream world works when you look at yourself, you're not a sheep, but when you look at everyone else, they are sheep. The social commentary on this is just <laughs> palpable. <laughs> I'm not the sheep. They're the sheep. <laughs> Fucking idiots. So it's like, oh, man. Good. Before we can explore the rest of this landing, we do have a little scene with the sheep who is helping us climb up those first two floors that we've completed. It looks like you survived. Who are you? A sheep? Do I look like a sheep? You're the sheep. Everybody here is a sheep but me. Wait, I recognize that voice. Who are you? Where the hell is this place? Wish I knew. One thing's for certain, though. If we don't run, we're going to be killed. Killed? If you see this place once, it's all over. You'll keep coming back every night. Every night? You're kidding me. We all have the same fate here. If you don't want to die, you've got to climb. So if I climb, I'll be saved? There's no guarantee. Take a look at that. See that bell? It's like a church or something. A church? If we can reach the top, there may be a way to escape. So there is a way. Like I said, there's no guarantee. But we've got to believe. It keeps us sane. Those who panic die first. Quit with all the dying stuff. I'll do whatever you say. Just just help me. Look, from here on out, I'm afraid you're on your own. I'm going now. No, no, no. No, no, wait. You hurry too. Hey! You can't be serious. If you don't climb, you die. (laughs) It's as simple as that sheep told us. There might be a way out at the top. Any thoughts on that scene, or did that, well, or was that? When you put it like that, now you're making it sound like if you don't move forward in life, you just die, and you just pray for a fucking oh. exit up top. You know, it's not guaranteed, but you hope it's there. Fuck me, god damn it! <laughs> damn. Uh, damn. All right. Well, shit. John bro. just went deep on us. That's why he's Johnny. That's why he's Johnny. Right. Every game that we've played for this 
for the game club has some hidden damn message. I know. I don't I'm like tired it. of it. Okay. <laughs> I'm goddamn tired of it. Sometimes you just want to be a plumber that just goes through fucking. <laughs> I just want to say the princess. I just want eat some play. mushrooms. Get a little bit bigger. What's wrong wanna, with that? I just want to play Fruit Ninja. <laughs> I play Candy Crush. Get into oh, the last man. level before they add four thousand more. Do you guys think that Vincent might be at least a reliable narrator? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for his own feelings. I mean, right now we're in a dream, right? So I mean, yeah, nothing, you know, this is whatever. But like, I feel like he's pretty honest with with how he's feeling, and I think some weird shit's gonna happen to him. Oh, I'm sorry, some weirder shit's gonna happen to him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, but I think he's pretty trustworthy so far. As I mentioned, on this landing, we can walk around, talk to the sheep. There's a book that you can save at. There's also these two sheep who crouch down and talk to each other, and they will teach you different techniques. Very important to learn. As John mm-hmm. mentioned earlier, you have to learn the techniques. He wasn't just saying that to sound cool or anything. It's like <laughs> legit in this game, learn the techniques yeah. to climb. But he did sound cool while saying it, John. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> did anyone pick up on anything here at this landing? Anything look a little interesting to anyone? Yes. So the cool. guy with. The hair. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy with the glasses. Yeah. You saw them at the, the bar. Real the quick. Yeah. 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 The journalist and the, the guy Damn. with the hair. The businessman. Mm, uh-huh. Suspicious. Yep. I saw that and I was like, ooh, weird. I wonder who else we might see on uh. these landings as the game progresses. There are also other moments while talking to sheep that your responses can affect your meter. So if a sheep is panicking and you tell the sheep to calm down, your meter might go up. If you tell the sheep to shut up, it's probably going to go down. <laughs> so yet again, you have to pay attention to how you're responding to those around you. I had a lot of fun talking to the sheep. Because like, like I said, it's another thing where the production of the game is great and the voice acting is great. All the different sheep, even though they a lot of them look exactly the same, you kind of start can like put together which one's which by like what they're saying and like they're just a little quirky and some of them is i don't know it was it was definitely like i definitely had a good time experiencing and going through the uh the level up here other than the fucking bell going off constantly <laughs> that really honestly is like a big complaint of mine like i i think that's unnecessary to, it's that it ruins that part of the level for me because i just keep getting annoyed hearing the, the gonging where I'm like, I just want to talk to all these people and not have to worry about that. Oh, that was good. When you're talking to some of the sheep, you can, I don't know if it's like indirectly learning about techniques, but some of them get a little bit worried and they're like, I don't know how to make the top. I don't know how to climb, blah, blah. And you pretty much tell them like, this is how you climb. And I'm pretty sure at some points they learn techniques from you, but you're learning the same, like you're learning the technique as well. So you're like teaching them, but indirectly learning as well. Yeah, like showed you a different technique, but like you're helping the other sheep. Right. There's also on this landing a confessional. When you walk on in there, you have a little interaction with the person on the other side of the confessional. Uh Welcome to the confessional. It seems a new lamb has appeared. Who are you? This is the world of nightmares. You are the lambs who have been chosen. You'll all be dead soon. What? Don't be ridiculous. But before I kill you, I want to determine your life's worth. So, I'll have you answer my question. Damn it, what is this? Question one. Is marriage the point where life begins or ends? Pull the rope with the answer that best matches your true feelings. And you have to do exactly that. You have to pull the rope for which one you want to answer. On the right, you have it begins. On the uh-huh. left, you have it ends. Guys, I, I was super love, excited. <laughs> love this. I thought it was so fucking good. <laughs> I saw this part and instantly thought, I can't wait to see what John <laughs> has to say about it. I can't wait to hear about this. Like, I everyone knows to- what I'm going to pick. <laughs> I, know. Yeah. I can't 100%. wait to hear what Devon's going to say. <laughs> Every single question is going to be great during this podcast. It's fun in general just to to have these kinds of things. 
then they do this little twist of you where they show everybody the community answers yes. of like everyone's first choice, which was made it even better. Like <laughs> I was just like, this is the greatest thing ever. Like why don't more games do stuff like this? This is so much fun. I was having a ball at this point. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> this is great. Oh man. Well, boys, we'll start with Devon. Does <laughs> life begin or end at marriage? I actually really debated this one myself because I was like, <laughs> I was like, at one part, you're giving up like a sense of yourself, right? And you're going from one person to becoming two people, right? You're like, like melding your worlds from two to one is what you want to say. Yes, from oh. two to one. Sorry, oh. <laughs> to one kind of thing. Oh. Right? You're all you're becoming one person, right? And then I was like, well. It kind of does begin because you're starting your life out with someone, a brand new life. Uh, you don't know if you'll have kids or anything, so that brings more life. Yada yada yada. So I went with it begins. I, I played a little. I played the little. You know, the white, white hat. The white hat. <laughs> I went the, the white hat. And this is the point in the, in the game where I become black hat. Right. Black I went into Peter's closet and I said, "Hey man, can I borrow this?" <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Don't worry, man. I got a whole bunch of them." <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I definitely pulled the it ends rope <laughs> and then fucking hung myself with it. <laughs> uh, as you have probably already guessed, I picked It Begins. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, well, I mean, it is, it is great to see the community's answer as a whole, oh, though. So good, you dude. Know? But I mean, is it really. To see how light? small that it ends portion and just know that I'm a part of that community. Although think, this is people picking. <coughs> oh, dude, all the, a, a, a huge portion of the ends are, are probably currently married. They're like, Oh no, <laughs> your life is done once you're married. Bro. <laughs> My thing is it's like, it's not a wrong. It's not a right or wrong question, you know, cause yeah. you know, everyone feels differently. Whether you, you know, you are married and you're like, fucking shit. It's just all over homie. I mean, if there's weirdos, it's like, I'm still still learning and growing. It's just beginning. It's just, you yeah, know, to get out of here. With that question answered, we now head on to the second floor. This one introduces more of those stone blocks. Some that you can pull, some that you can't. The way I think it works, John, because you were wondering which ones you could and which ones you couldn't. Mm -hmm. they it's have if the they have the face. The front. Yeah, if they have like yeah. that weird symbol on the front. Guys, I'm going to let you know right here, this level, I died Ooh, off of stupidity. No. And the way it happened, the blocks can connect at the edges. As long as the block touches another block on its edge, mm -hmm. that's the key point right there, on it its edge. It can de defy gravity and it, just hang there. Yeah. Exactly. Like blocks next to each other, those aren't edges. <laughs> <laughs> if they're right next they're right next to each other. They do not defy gravity. <laughs> and what I did was I pushed a row of blocks because I was greedy and I wanted money. In case you didn't know, there's money littered around. Your score is measured in Enigma points. As you climb up each new step, more points will be added to your score. Use these coins to purchase items on the landings between stages. Your score is also used as a condition for unlocking additional game features. The faster you climb, the more bonus coins you will earn. If you want more coins, climb faster and aim for a high score. There was a gap in between the blocks. I pushed the row of the blocks. I hopped over, started to run across, and then when I reached the middle block, like I said, Blocks touching on the sides aren't connected, oh. so oh. I jumped right off. <laughs> we also get introduced to climbing with other sheep. Other sheep will be climbing these blocks with us, and they will get in your way. They Gosh. won't let you climb up certain blocks, but you can also knock them down, push them away, kill them if need be. I've seen others here and there. The fighting's gonna start getting fierce. You mean the other guys climbing with me? They're in my way! They're all trying to climb, like you. This is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. There's no time for courtesy. 
Anyway, no matter what pops up, stay calm and keep climbing. Two creatures cannot stand on a block at the same time. Sometimes, sheep will get in your way as they try and climb to the top. To move a sheep out of your way, move up against him and shove him. Guys, what did you think about climbing with other sheep? I'm pretty sure this is where I died. I got bopped. Did you? Bopped right off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bopped me right off. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, dude, what the fuck just happened? I was like, that was weird. And I was like, oh, okay, I got it. And then from there, it was, from there, it was pretty easy. It, they were annoying until I found out that if you just run right at them, you hit them and they they fall. And I was like, oh, all right. That was like the first thing I would do is like, get out of my way. And then <laughs> they'd be gone and it was it was fine. I, I just know that these puzzles, the way my my OCD is, is like I need to get the money on top of just getting out. And I, obviously, like, that's the added challenge of it is to like you could probably have an easier time of just getting out but like it's gonna bug me knowing that i'm gonna be gonna have to force myself to skip over <laughs> like piles of money or like items or continues just so i can get through the level tell you what man that back button savior <laughs> man savior definitely comes in handy and yes. it came in handy even more so for the next section but we'll get oh, there soon man <laughs> fuck Fuck this game. <laughs> we finish that second stage and we make it to the next landing. We have another cutscene with the tied sheep. It's you. Looks like you're still alive. Is that you? You're safe too. Barely. Still. How many people died trying to come here? The people. I don't Listen. Here, you see everybody else as sheep. But all these sheep, they're really human. There's got to be some reason why we were all brought here. What reason could there be? Why do we have to suffer like this? Who knows? But I do have an idea. An idea? Let's stop the speculation. It's just going to confuse us more. <sighs> you should think of what to do next. I'm hearing rumors of something big coming soon. Be careful now. Something big? Still, you're really getting the hang of things. There's nothing more I can teach you. Can't be true. Come on, you gotta have something you can tell me. If we're lucky, we'll meet again. Uh, hey, wait! Uh, right. So there we have it. We have the confirmation. The sheep are people. They're sheeple. But we are also now on our own. That man, that sheep with the tie is no longer gonna help us. So John, you get what you want. We get to climb without interruptions. Yes, I regret <laughs> it deeply. <laughs> <laughs> Before we start climbing again, though, we get some new things on this landing, such as a shop. This shop, we can spend those coins that we earn to buy items. Those items are what can be used while you climb. If you buy these items, it does tell you that you will have a tougher time getting the gold for the stage. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I don't like they're punishing you for buying stuff, essentially. They're basically saying, hey, don't be a little bitch. Right. <laughs> Finish I was the just going to say that. I wasn't going to do that it. anyway, but that mm -hmm. made me. I was like, I'm not a little bitch. I ain't gonna fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not buying I'm not a little bitch. <laughs> I ain't no fucking bitch. I said the same thing. I was like, okay, I ain't buying nothing. <laughs> On this landing as well, you can run into those sheep. That teach you techniques again. You can learn a couple more things. This is where Devon mentioned teaching other sheep can be possible. And then you get to go back into the confessional Hell yeah. for another one of John's favorite segments. <laughs> so I'm curious, right? I'll just say that I had to go through this part twice because of the, the saving aspect, which I will say I wish they had like an autosave function in this game but they don't so i made the mistake of when we got to the end of the section i ended up like backing out and it's like all oh, save progress will be lost you still don't go i'm like i think it's saved it did not save <laughs> so oh, i had to go through no. this part twice <laughs> but the second time i got to here it asked me a different question than the first time oh oh yeah and i was like huh 
okay i wonder how many different questions there are weird we're about to find out if we got the same question you're here lost lamb he'll be answering another of my questions all right i've had enough of this a man's worth can't be measured by a single question this is the second question honestly are romance and marriage just annoyances to think about the answers for this question are on the right of vincent i hate it on the left of vincent i love it pretty sure not the question that i got either not time. the question that you got me yeah. either wow so yeah. we got different hold on i'm i'm questions. going back to see what my question was it kind of sucks because i wish we did have the same question same so could, i was hoping that we it. could go through it like so that the it's first weird that we time, all had so the first question must be the same the first question i had the first time around was would you rather have an older partner or a younger partner? What do you answer? Younger, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got what Get my question here. was. My question was, where do you feel the most calm? In a dark, quiet room or a bright and noisy room? Mine was a bright, noisy room. Do you feel more anxiety alone or, or with uh, in a group of people? That's what my second one was. What was your answer for that one? Group of people. Bright and noisy was wrong, apparently. Really? You went down yes. for a bright and noisy room? I went down for bright and noisy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> fucking laugh at my fucking... <laughs> well, <laughs> Devon, is romance annoying? Do you love it or do you hate it? I'm not really a romantic person and shit, so I'd probably say I hate it for... <clears throat> guys it gets annoying for us to be expected to be romantic especially for commercial holidays like valentine's day but yeah romance sucks <laughs> and that's the problem with with these uh these questions is there's no nuance right it's like love it hate it right there's no in between so you have to make a choice which is kind of fun still but uh yeah i'm pulling the hate the hate stick <laughs> all day <laughs> Let me adjust my white hat and uh, oh god! I picked. I the guy love fucking it. Fucking putting rose petals on a fucking bed. Boom. You'll never catch me doing that ever. <laughs> After choosing your answer, we get a little insight. The man on the other side of the confessional talks to us a little bit. I'll answer your question this time, little lost lamb. This entire place is an immense sanctuary. There are eight floors. This is the second night, and only the second floor. Wait, does that mean there's an end to this? If I can get to the end, I don't have to die? Don't get your hopes up. You'll never be able to reach the pinnacle. Anyway, listen. I hear the sounds of your night terrors approaching. <laughs> Are you ready? I don't like that laugh. Just what the hell's going on here? So it looks like there is a way out. <laughs> Not that. That man thinks we're going to make it. Yeah. What do you guys think of that person on the other side of the confessional? I don't know if he's the guy that's running the show or like what's going on. Uh, it's kind of still a mystery character. Kind of a dick, but it's fine. <laughs> I don't know if you if you actually talk to him before you sit down because you can actually talk through the, the wall. Oh, and, I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He's and the, the second time he yells at you <laughs> to sit down before I'm talking. Sit down. He reminds me of Toby. That's who he sounds like to me. I have to pay sounds attention like to that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I didn't, I didn't pick up on that. Like when I first heard his voice, I was like, wait a second. Hold on. We have now made it to the third floor. And this is the final floor of stage two. Way to go, guys. Huh? We made it this far. <laughs> Forever we made it. Of course, we don't get to complete this without a little twist in how the stage mm -hmm. will be run. Fuck this game. This is the level that got me a little scared for what's what's to come. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, no. You won't escape. Huh? What? Voice. Where have I? I won't let you escape. What the fuck is this? We are now not only against the time, but uh, if you remember those two hands and that giant fork that reached up toward Vincent in the first stage, they're back. 
And it turns out that might be Catherine. <laughs> See you next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> she is now charging up at you. She will strike at you with the fork if she gets to you. Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> it's so funny that she got a fucking fork, dude. <laughs> You ex- you explode into pieces <laughs> if she touches you. She's angry, dude. And she'll do this wicked obnoxious thing where she will swipe the blocks and turn a bunch of them to that stone that takes forever to move. Mm-hmm. So annoying. Something I just noticed is that next to the the wall or like the oh. y- your map of the wall, you have the the beer bottles. Yes, sir. Yep. I know, depending on, like, what you do at the bar, you can drink more. Mm-hmm. Does that affect how you play this at all? I just looked it up. And are you guys ready for this? I'm ready. This is courtesy of the Catherine Wiki page. There are three levels of drunkenness which affect Vincent's ability to walk and move around the bar, though there are no actual downsides to drinking. On the contrary, inside the nightmare stages, oh, inebriation... Fuck is a positive. The drunker Vincent is, the faster he moves. What? Oh, we getting tanked, baby. <laughs> we making bad decisions. What's <laughs> up? Guys, what did you think of this stage? I thought the stage was bullshit. <laughs> I definitely used the back button more times than I can count. And I died a lot. <laughs> a lot. And I was, dude, I was getting so frustrated. When she swipes and the blocks change, I was just like, oh, okay, great. This is a great time. This is great. And then, like, every time I thought I would get farther away from her, I actually wasn't. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, she sucks. She's the worst. <laughs> She's the worst, bro. I didn't yeah, actually realize until this level that there was, blo- that you could move those blocks. Mm. Um, so like i thought when she froze them i was like fuck i was like how am i supposed to do some of this and i didn't know what to do and then i accidentally um pulled one out and it was slower and i was like oh so you can move some of those okay um which made it marginally easier <laughs> but uh yeah this this is kind of a bullshit level <laughs> it, 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 i was like fuck if this is what it's gonna a taste of what's to come i'm a little little scared yeah 100 <sighs> percent. but it's fine. i was uh it was just bullshit now this is where peter goes well i did it no problem i didn't die at all i mean i didn't die but i definitely used the back line <laughs> and i used it a lot at one point i went back so many turns i was like i just need to start this from scratch I thought I was a good amount ahead of her, and she gets on your ass fucking quick. Quick, dude. Like, I'm like, fuck. All right. I thought totally I had more time, but the slow box. She starts like aiming with the fork. Yeah. Right. Like, as she gets closer, she lifts the fork up and starts aiming for you. <laughs> <laughs> it felt very satisfying when you're on the blocks that are like glowing red where she's about to stab, and you like dodge it. <laughs> you like get up, and she's like, Whew, and misses, like, hell yeah. Fuck you. Catherine, you ain't locking me down. Uh, you, didn't die, you didn't die once through this section, did you? I did in the second oh, stage. No, no, no. I'm saying in this, in this. Oh part. no, with her, no, yeah. I didn't. Yeah. Bro, I died like six times, dude. <laughs> Literally, I'm not even lying, bro. I was getting so mad. Like I said, I should have died. If there wasn't a back button, I would have sure. died. Yeah. I just used the back button to the point where I, I completely redid a staircase and was able to make it up. <laughs> We reach the top, and Vincent is super excited, as super I bet jazzed. you all were. <laughs> yeah, I was finally excited <laughs> yeah. to be done with it. Yeah. I'm sure you almost did Very the happy. same exact movement that Vincent did. <laughs> However, Vincent shows how much of an idiot he is, because does he just walk through the door? No. No. <laughs> he stands there and watches the hands of Catherine reach at him. Luckily, the door opens up, and a Kamehameha blast shoots from the door, <laughs> and Calico <laughs> stops Catherine from pursuing him, and he goes on through. Let me tell you, I would not hover around that no. door. If it was personally me, I would have walked through that thing so fast. Yeah, you you didn't finish until you get through that door, bro. 
That's when you <laughs> that's when you celebrate. All right. It's usually how it happens, bro. Until you get through the door, you know you don't finish. <laughs> don't you run! Ugh. Is it gone? I'm safe, right? Yeah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah. I thought it was a goddamn deadly premonition for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that music hit, I, it made me laugh too. <laughs> we finished the stages for this section, guys. Hell yeah. No more climbing for this section. We got oh, a little yeah. more to go before <sighs> we're done with the episode. Because we have. An exciting moment ahead of us. Oh, baby, do we ever. <laughs> Vincent Bro. wakes up from his dream. Piece of and his eyes. Ooh, got them, got them sheeple eyes. Yeah, those eyes that you could see on the sheep. He wakes up and his pupils are that color and that shape. And then quickly turn back to his normal eyes. Definitely weird. It's a cool supernatural yeah. way of bringing what was happening at night into the real world. Vincent is sweating profusely. He's definitely worried. He doesn't know what happened, but a little calm now that he's woken up until he realizes someone is next to him. That's right. Someone is next to him in bed and he looks over and it turns out to be the blonde hair bombshell we oh. saw at the bar not only does he see this attractive young lady lying next to him mm. we get a flashback to what actually happened at the bar marriage is just a tradition right seriously who wants to be tied down as long as two people are together it's okay right it's supposed to be free don't you think kind of surprising hmm? you know how it is with most girls as soon as they're adults all they can think about is tying the knot right there are girls like you out there. <laughs> Never knew. Oh, it's not that strange, is it? Men aren't the only ones who fear being chained down. I'll remember that. Thank goodness. Huh? We think alike. Oh! work tomorrow so I need to get home oh, oh. I had fun tonight oh, oh. you must like what you see <laughs> I'm not staring you're a bad liar <laughs> you taste like smoke <laughs> but I don't mind <laughs> you don't say I would I like a cigarette <laughs> after that. Jesus Christ. I would, like, I would like to say I, in no shape or form, condone any such actions if you are in a relationship. But I will say, God damn, man. <laughs> no. Tell you what, bro. Here, here's where my man Vincent went wrong. There's some clear red flags that are going <laughs> off right Facts. there with Facts, the things that she's bro. saying. Dude. And I was like, dude. <laughs> Uh, okay, I know, dude. I get it. But yeah. honestly, crazy town, dude. Honestly, probably would have fell for it. But to be <laughs> fair, damn, it's like such a typical anim like mm -hmm. anime fan service type thing going on here. I'm all for it. <laughs> but uh, I will say, it makes me a little mad. You don't know what you you don't want. You don't know what you have until facts. it's gone. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> I, I feel like he's more just doesn't 
know how well, to react Catherine, to it. Catherine right. no, definitely. That. Definitely. And it's not even that he actually feels like I don't know. It's kind of I'd like to see where where, where it goes. He, definitely. He I mean on his it. on his jacket it says Italian stallion. Anyone see that? <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's do probably what Devon's gonna love right now is uh we gotta describe <laughs> the scene for oh, our God. listeners. <laughs> <laughs> so they're sitting at the bar they're both having the drink talking about marriage she surprises him by sitting next to him without him noticing because he's trying to whip out another cigarette trying to light up and all of a sudden she's sitting right there next to him she takes a luscious sip of her drink very it slow was co- it was a cosmopolitan as well I just want to let everyone it's cosmopolitan he notices that she swallows that's, and, the, that's uh, that hard <laughs> liquor <laughs> Cosmopolitan <laughs> straight liquor. <laughs> she then is sitting with her elbow on the table. She notices that he's staring at her. She leans over a little bit, puts her elbow onto a coaster, and the coaster slips away and she falls into him. Oops. Oh, yep, exactly. Red flag. Sorry. Red oh, flag. Huge red flag. Yeah. Vincent catches her. That's why she says you're so kind. When he tries to, <laughs> when he tries to move his hand from her because his hand is now around her body, she grabs his hand, interlocks her fingers with his, and then glides his hand across her booty. I just her, want to say, if the, if the roles were reversed, this would be Facts. considered assault right now. Oh, 100%. <laughs> she then gets up and kisses him mm-hmm. to which his cigarette burns out Find very self. quickly <laughs> <laughs> the longest kiss ever <laughs> and then we fast forward back to the scene in the bedroom guys oh Ooh. no no you missed the whole other red flag where she says you taste like smoke <laughs> oh my I'm like that that's uh, that's and then she licks hardcore her red flag yeah she licks her lips seductively before Jesus it fades Christ, to white yeah. and we're back into the bedroom all right <laughs> now the thing is speak. yeah i don't know why he's confused i don't know why, <laughs> why he's confused that they're back there. that's the thing he is confused he doesn't know how she ended up there yes let me speak they were just drinking too much let me yeah. talk to my man vincent vincent didn't really do anything wrong all right <laughs> the one thing that he all he had to say or do was just get the fuck up and dip bro you should have just left you should have just left or just be like get your fucking hands off me don't touch me bitch i'm spoken for but no you fucking failed weak weak man let's see how weak he is with this <laughs> naked <laughs> this is as devon's got the fucking <laughs> the lotion next to his <laughs> yeah. That's right. She's lying down next to him naked, and she is now awake, and we get an enjoyable scene. Holy shit. Oh, man, this is not good. Hmm? What is it good? Well, uh, you know, hooking up after we just met. Jeez, what the hell am I saying? Mm -hmm. Um, is this going to be a problem? So... Okay, I cheated on Catherine. This is bad. This is really, really bad. But I didn't make a move. She forced herself on me. Oh, fuck, man. I drank way too much. <laughs> uh, would you mind not staring at me like that? It's kind of creepy. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Listen, I don't want you to get the wrong idea, okay? I don't just sleep around. I came here because I like you. Ah, oh, oh. So, how do you feel about me? Huh? Oh, wow. Um, I can't quite explain it. Uh, I feel odd. Hmm? You see, this is my first time. Oh. Wow. Really screwing this up right now. So then, it was love at first sight. Huh? Ah! What? I'm sorry. I'm really. You said you have to work, right? Work? Uh, I 
guess. Sorry, I uh, I gotta go now. I have a um a dentist appointment now. Dentist? Yeah, dentists get angry if you're late too. Oh, I wanted to stay with you a little longer. I guess they'll have to wait until next time. <laughs> okay, see you soon. Hey, wait! I'm actually dating. Someone. Oh, this is a mistake. A mistake. It's gotta be a mistake. The classic line of, I don't do this <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Again, red flag. Oh, so this is love at first sight? Red flag. <laughs> it's like, dude, get out now. <laughs> Just get out of there. Ugh. She doesn't make it easy for him though, as she straddles him. So for she a makes it of the scene hard. hard. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are fucking whack, bro. <laughs> Before <laughs> clenching herself as she screams, saying that she has a dentist appointment and running off. That's the scene, guys. What did you think? So. When he says, this is my first time, what does he mean? I first think he's going first time cheating, yeah. Okay, cool. That's what I was but, thinking. But it comes out like, making it sound like it's his right, first time. Right, and I was like, yeah. how long have you been with her? You know what? Maybe she does deserve this shit. Like, <laughs> that's, like, that's fucked up. Like, she did that. She's and made like, some marriage. <laughs> and my thing, She's a good here's, girl. here's my biggest thing about this. I like all kinds of girls, okay? Like mom. I will just say. If a girl did that to me, straddled me like that, there's not much I could do either. I'd be like, bro, what? Her voice. You just is... called him a weak man. <laughs> he is a weak man, but I, I can see where he's coming from. She yeah. does, oh, doesn't you really... can see where he's coming from? <laughs> I, see where he, I see where he's coming from. You know, but, uh, she, I mean, she doesn't make it easy for him at all mm -hmm. like to do anything. She's, she's definitely the more dominant, right? Like, like I said, he is kind of weak, right? And maybe she's kind of loosey goosey. And, and right? maybe she picked up on that, free, right? Free flowing, I would right. say. Maybe she picked up on the fact that he's a weak man or a pushover. Yeah. But I mean, I also think it's tied into the story of like, she's obviously, we're not seeing Catherine at her, the new Catherine, Catherine of the Sea. Like, there's definitely something going on where she's pulling some strings. That's the uh, thing. They definitely have not said her name yet either. Uh -huh. But this is. The Catherine with the C. Right. right. You can you just you, you, just you know it. that this is her. Yeah. But they definitely have not said her name and I don't think he really even knows her name yet. No, nope, I don't weird. know. Yeah. I mean, maybe they shared it when they were at the bar, but we as an audience member did not see right. that. Also Tell with her what. saying she wants to go to the dentist. That was weird. Like why did she run out like that? What right. did she have to do? Right. Hmm. What scared her? Is what I'm thinking. Because, you know, she shrieked before. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember her looking at a clock or anything like that or nothing. She says, you know. Because it's, it's daytime. She's going to turn into the uh, the queen the queen fucking sheep. I don't know. <laughs> After that scene, we get to meet Vincent's third friend, Orlando. Hey. Orlando thinks very highly of Vincent's situation. Yes. <laughs> Ah, oh, you know what? It just hit me. You know how they say every guy has three hot streaks with the ladies in his life? This is your third. Hot streaks? When the hell were the other two? When we were kids, you're the most popular with the girls. I don't remember that. The second time you were in the zone was when you started dating Catherine. Although, uh, that's over if she finds out about this. Oh, crap, man. She's probably gonna kill me. That's what you're all scared about. As long as she doesn't find out, you're safe, right? Just act like it never happened. I'm not like you. I can't just ignore this. Well then, why not switch it up? That way you won't hear any more marriage talk, right? All that stuff about soulmates and eternal love is bullshit. Married life sucks, man. You really wanna go through the same shit I have? I'm not like you. I don't wanna sleep around. I just want life to stay the same. <sighs> What am I gonna do? I didn't mean for any of this to happen. If you're gonna whine, you shouldn't have done it, dumbass. 
Well, no shit. I wish I could just live all carefree like you. Don't you realize there's nothing you can do, you schmuck? No matter how good you are to a woman, you never know if she'll stab you in the back. <sighs> well, if you're gonna ditch the new girl, hook me up. She's cute, right? You got a picture of her? Nice. No, I don't have her pick. She's not your type, anyway. Come on, how do you know that? Because she's my type. Oh. <laughs> I am so fucked. What do you guys think of Orlando? He's like Johnny to the max. Like, <laughs> ultra-realist, borderline sleazy, you know? But they seem like they've they've been had a friendship for a better part of their life. It's one of those things where the, those are the type of people you could probably be the most honest with. I would argue that that's probably one of his one of his best friends. Like one of like it is his best friend. Yeah, I would they seem that. a lot closer than the others. But he also it seems old. jaded. Oh yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Talks about marriage and eternal love and mm -hmm. how it's all bullshit. Like something happened. Yeah, it sounded like me. It sounded like me. It was like, <laughs> it's like channeling me through that. <laughs> not wrong though <laughs> it is uh interesting that i thought vincent kind of got defensive at the end oh yeah when he was like oh just like pass her on to me like it's my type you know even though he's guilty about doing it he's still he feels some type of way yeah he's, he's she's cool. she's got him under her spell mm -hmm. i bet you she smells great too <laughs> <laughs> I bet you she does, bro. Some per some perfume. Mm. We then flash forward to the bar. We're there again. These guys spend a lot of time there. Vincent is there with all three of his friends. Toby, Johnny, and Orlando now. They're all there together. And we get introduced to something called Woman's Wrath, along with a new character. I never saw the girl. Oh, really? I figured one of you guys told her to sit with me. Uh, if this girl was cute, you'd definitely remember. You know, I gotta say, because of you, George, I never get a chance to date anyone. If I was a ladies' man, I wouldn't be here every night with you guys. Anyway, you dig the older chicks, don't you? Yeah, I want a woman who's, you know, mature, stern, has a nice pair of heels. Whoa, man. I like that creepy guy in horror movies who tries too hard to be noticed. Shut up! I'm not like that! What's wrong with, you know, having some adult fun with someone older than I am? Hmm. So, did I hear someone call for me? Oh, hey, Erica! I've got a nice pair of stiletto heels I know how to use. Whoa, Erica. Okay, enough of that. So have you guys heard about the woman's wrath? They say it targets cheating men and kills them, or not. Which is it? Wait, 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 what? What exactly is this woman's wrath? Oh, you don't need to worry about it. You only care about your girl, Vincent. Oh, what are you talking about? This guy totally needs to know. Cheating is pathetic. I agree with Toby. Pathetic. Who are you calling pathetic? Shut up and eat your peanuts. My eye! Huh? What? You're cheating! Weren't you talking about marriage? Why don't you say it louder? Seriously, stop yelling about cheating and shit. I think someone on Mars didn't quite hear you. Oh, that's low, Vincent. Lowest of the low. Don't call me that. Now you know. Just leave me alone. Well, well, come on, tell me about this girl. Oh, God. Apparently, she's destiny level cute. Cut that shit out. Are you kidding? Finding your soulmate is awesome. I'm totally jealous. You jackasses better not mention this to anyone outside the bar. I am serious. Dude, we know the drill. Say, have you heard? It seems that Boss was a bit of a player back in the day and broke more than his share of hearts. You see how he's wearing those tacky sunglasses indoors? They say he's using those to hide his face. <laughs> yeah, right. We have met the red-haired fox Erica. She is a server at the bar. Mm. She seems like the only server because there's not a single other person in that uniform <laughs> hanging around there. She, like Vincent's friends, think Vincent is the lowest of the low for cheating. However, then proceeds to say, 
So tell me all about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, lady. <laughs> Gossip queen over there. Mm -hmm. What did you guys think of the scene? It, it's cool to you see how each one of them kind of reacts a little differently. Orlando, as we mentioned before, is kind of like sleazeball. You know, that's awesome, whatever. <clears throat> Johnny's kind of like, that's pathetic. You shouldn't, shouldn't do that. And then Tobias, he's like, oh, man, it's cool that you found your soulmate. Like, he's, he's kind of like not as well seasoned in the dating game, I guess. He's kind of like, again, seems like the young character, kind of oblivious. Um, so it's like they all have these like different perspectives of what's going on. I get the feeling that like Vincent likes drowning in his sorrows a little bit, you know, getting caught up in the drama. I don't know. It's weird. I, I'd like to see how he acts moving forward with this whole situation. If he's actually serious about Catherine with a K and if he's actually regretful of it, or if he's just, like I said, you know, kind of, uh, kind of wallowing in it and just getting caught up in the drama. I think this is very reminiscent of what guys actually do, right? They have a problem or they just need something or some people to talk to. They turn to their best pals and mm -hmm. they're just shooting the shit about everything's jotting ideas down and putting their input and things like that. And only real friends will tell you the truth. I feel like I've had, I've had some of these conversations, right? right. You know what I'm saying like, it's just, it's just normal guy. talking. Yeah. It's like judgment without judgment. Actually. Right, exactly. it's, like... it's just the people that you want to hear it from. It was a good character building scene. You got to see what each of their relationships are with each other. Mm -hmm. So it's cool. Then we get to see this man with sunglasses behind the bar. <laughs> Apparently, he must have been a player back in the day, so he hides his face. But we don't know too much else about him. Maybe. I put you in a bet he's got sheep eyes underneath those sunglasses. <laughs> there we go. Maybe there's something under there. Who knows? Once that scene has ended, we are now able to walk around the bar and we can talk to any of the customers in the bar. You can sit sure. down, you can have a drink, you can check your phone, reply to text messages, you can play music at the jukebox, you can play this arcade game in the corner called Rapunzel, which is basically more block moving and climbing. Yeah. It's a good way of practice, in all honesty. I do want to point out one thing about this game. It's hilarious when you do climb up Rapunzel's hair because uh -huh. he jumps through the window and tackles her. <laughs> right. I didn't notice that. And then it's just hearts coming from the window. So, uh, <laughs> oh. Nice. A little whoopee, hey. bro. A little whoopee. A little bit of Vincent and Catherine with a C. Hey, yo. <laughs> did you guys talk to anyone in the bar? I did. Every, everybody. Nice. What did you guys think talk, of that? I didn't talk to everyone. I talked to the two twins from Deadly Premonition. <laughs> the old they, ladies? They grew up and had a sex chain. <laughs> the old ladies. I did talk to them. They're weird, bro. Yeah. Super weird. Uh, it, it was cool. Like, uh, this is where I found out that the sheep in mm -hmm. the, the dream were the, the guys. Like, this is the guy with, like, the, the fucking hair that teaches you the, the tricks. And then the journalist guy with the vest mm -hmm. is in the, the other end. And then, uh, did you get the the picture sent to you? No. What picture? You can get a picture, a text. No. So I didn't get a picture, but I did get a text message. Okay. So, oh, you're you're too nice. You probably yeah. But <laughs> no. well, this yeah. is where I played the middle. This is where I played the middle ground. What <laughs> I wasn't oh, no. So I got a text message from coquettish cat. And the text message says, hey, Vincent, if you get this, let me know, okay? If you do, I'll send you a picture. You know you want to see it. I'm so mad. <laughs> so I sent, who is this? Do I know you? Something along those lines. And I never got a text back. Oh, really? John, what happened with you? You can get a message back? Interesting. So you get a message back, and it's, it's Catherine with the C. <laughs> she sends you a picture that you can't look at while at the, in the bar. Like you try to open it up and he goes like, Oh fuck. He's like, I, are you, yeah, I can't look at this in public. So you have to go into the bathroom stall and look at it <laughs> in there. And it was just like a picture of her face from like, just, just below her eyes and her uh, chin. And she's like looking 
licking your lips. And then he's like, oh, God, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it was it was funny. And I thought it was like kind of cool that you have to like go to the bathroom to. to I, again, I had a blast at this part. I was like, this is a it's night cool. hanging out with the bros at the bar. And just right. like just shit. Like, it, I thought it was so cool. Like, I don't know. you're just I like, oh, a, man, you guys aren't going to believe what I just <laughs> like the, the the text messaging again is like one of my favorite mechanics of just like trying to figure out that puzzle of like what to send to to not be like a complete asshole but i don't know it, i i enjoyed it i gotta spend more time in the bar oh dude Just come on man time. you're gonna you're gonna miss so many things if you don't walk around and talk and I interact know. with stuff it's like deadly premonition i know <laughs> i gotta do i gotta do it more now as we reach the end of the night because as you talk to people time passes Everyone leaves, so it's just you sitting at the bar. It's just Vincent, and a familiar voice can be heard in the distance. How long are you going to be drinking there? <laughs> Hurry up and come. Did I, did I just hear something? Hey, come here. Wait, that voice. She sits down at the same booth that the two sat in the previous night. When you sit down, Vincent looks at Kat and asks her, Why are you here? So if I come here at this time of night, I can see you. What did you guys do? Uh, originally did not yet, and I sat back down. I, I want to say there's, there's only like a, a few more lines. I can't even really remember what happens, but nothing crazy, and then he gets back up and goes to the door. Gotcha. And then I left. I never got to this part. Did you leave huh? before? Mm-hmm. Oh, I talked to a few people when I just left. Come yeah. on, like I said, wow. I gotta stay in the bar more often. <laughs> wow. yeah. you, you can leave. This guy's so speed, talk, speed running over here. I talked to a few people. My girl. <laughs> I talked to a few people, and I and I did down. Oh man, I just like decided I to leave. I decided to leave right away. Nice. <laughs> With the night at the bar over, we find Vincent back in his room. He's sitting on his bed. He's still getting more and more drunk. Pounding beers. Passes out. And we end up back in the dream world. You've come. Tonight's area is the torture chamber, where traitors are put to rest. And that is the name of the next stage that we will be doing. It's the torture chamber. Dun, 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 dun. And we have reached the end of the section. Boom. Uh, this game's great, dude. Guys. It is. What do you think? I'm enjoying the game so far. Um, like I said, I got to stay in the bar more. Definitely more interact with more uh, people. Honestly, I think I might be a bad boy. Uh oh! Be a bad boy in this game. Just want to see how it plays out. I like that you get different choices, so you get to choose how you want to play this game. I like that. I like the freedom that you get, and the fact that this game came out in what 2011. At that time, I don't think this game would have done well. So I'm not too sure how well the game did. I don't know, like how many copies it sold or anything like that. So enough to garner a uh, re-release, right? Exactly, and even with that re-release, I got excited thinking you were going to say a sequel. Like, you never know, <laughs> never know. But I'm enjoying it so far, and I might even buy the re-release because I know in the re-release there's a lot more content. Really, there's a whole nother girl. Yes. What? <laughs> yes. There's a third Where, girl. How come it? we're not playing this? <laughs> what, what? It's on PlayStation only. It's wow. it's called Catherine Full Body. <laughs> Full Body Edition. I love it. So I'm really digging the game. It's just like it's just like you're playing watching an anime. It's great. And I look forward to playing more. I look forward to staying in the bar more. <laughs> Catherine with a C is gonna get this D. <laughs> i went into this game thinking i was going to absolutely hate it and i've never been so happy to, to do 180 on something like 
Ah, oh, dude, I'm I'm having so much fun with this. Like, the worst part of the game is actually the puzzle, the puzzle parts. <laughs> like, I, and that's not I, that's not to say it's bad. It's just like I'm not as super interested in that at all. It's almost kind of like a, uh, I, I, I it's like a dis- mild distraction between like the you know finding out what's going on. I, I'm into the story. I'm into the characters. I'm looking forward to seeing where it's going. And I like a lot of the uh, gameplay decisions that they've they've done here. So I am looking forward to this. I definitely think this is one of the more unique games that we've played. And so far for the game club, we've played a lot of unique games. Yeah, yeah. yeah right? <laughs> for real. But this one definitely offers a cool take on a story that we've heard many times before, as you guys have said. <laughs> it's got an interesting premise with the dream world the puzzles i'm sure are going to frustrate us immensely Mm. but at the same Mm -hmm. time once we complete them and move on to the next area we get to learn about the next part of the story i think it's going to kind of be like a hellblade in a way where you're annoyed at something but with the story progressing and with the turn of events you're going to think all right, well, what's next? I need Mm -hmm. to know what's going to happen. I need to know how they're going to react to this story element or to this turning point. Right. I'm enjoying the puzzles so far. I hope Mm -hmm. they don't get too ridiculous, but I feel like they will, especially because in this next section, guys, there is an interesting element added. Oh, no. And I imagine you guys are going to dislike it. So you remember this? I do. Okay. I do. Oh, no. It's nothing. It's what you expect is what I should say. It's what you expect for them to add into a game like this. And when you <sighs> see it, you'll say, oh, God damn it. <laughs> damn it. Great. Can't wait. But story wise, I can't wait to find out what's going to happen. Maybe we'll see uh, K and C collide. Oh. <laughs> 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 maybe a little uh maybe hey little. well you're here and you're here and we're here right I mean. maybe a little we're okay with the... <laughs> you can't hey, you have said... your cake and eat you... it too vincent <laughs> you want to take this to the next level okay <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like three levels <laughs> Bored. I'm well guys let me tell you what we have to play to for the next section we have to play know. stages three and four. Guys, you have to get to stage five. Get to stage five, and you will be done with section two. Nice. The reason we're letting everyone know what section we're playing to is because if you want to play with us, you can. All you got to do is join our Discord. You can do that by clicking the link that's in the description of the video or the podcast description on the service that you're listening to. If you do that, jump on in. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you'd like us to talk about because we'll bring up your questions, concerns, anything like that. We do have a little something from Edster, our man in Discord, who said, this game makes me actually feel relieved that I've never been in a relationship. (laughs) (laughs) Amen, dude. (laughs) If you can imagine, it's actually worse. (laughs) Shout out to Ed, sir. Thank you so much for listening and chatting with us. (laughs) If you can't play the game, if you don't have access to the game or you don't have time to play the game, but you still want to keep up, we have a solution for you. John's going to go over that for you. Just like Pete said, don't have the game. Don't want to, you know, buy it. Don't want to play it yourself. You kind of want to just hang out. Well, guess what? We got you covered. If you head on over to Twitch and follow us at BLKWHT Gaming, you can watch one of us play through the section that we're going to be talking about next. We're going to go live. You can chat with us there. Catch the VOD uh, either on Twitch or we upload it to YouTube so you can watch it later too if you want. Now, if you don't have time to watch the video, let's say you're always on the move, you can't sit down and watch an hour and 30 minutes, that's all right. You can listen to it too. And Devon's going to tell you about that. If you're on the go and you guys, like Pete said, you don't have time to catch the the stream, the VOD, uh, whether it's on Twitch or on YouTube, 
you can go to your favorite podcast listening platform. Uh, we're on Spotify. We're on uh, Google Play. We're on SoundCloud. We're on Stitcher. We're on Apple. We are on iHeartRadio, newly acquired from uh, last season. Ooh. Guys. We like the just, fucking coronavirus, baby. We right, everywhere, right? right. We, just, we, just we worldwide, said, bitch. We, we that that COVID nineteen, baby. You just can't get you can't get away from us. You, you cannot lose us. You can't get rid of. Us. But like I said, we're on all those uh, podcast listening services. So check us out on your favorite one. Um, also, leave comments on there as well. We do read those. Uh, leave ratings as well because that does help us out too. So we would greatly appreciate that. If you want to follow us on social media, you can. You can check us out at BLKWHC Gaming. That's the same as our Twitch. If you want to reach out to us in a more private sense, you can email us at BLKWHCGaming at gmail.com. That is it for episode one of our season five with Catherine. Woo! I'm your host, Peter. With my friends, Johnny Bag of Donuts. Later, doinks. And Devon, the dark skin, Benson. Oh, man. Now that name is just, now that name just hurts. Uh, it just hurts now. Hey. But I'll you take wanna it. give C that D. Yeah, you right. weak, weak man. <laughs> weak, 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 man. We are Black Whoa. and White Gaming, and we will see you next time. Uh,